As Qatar heads towards its first legislative elections in history, there's a couple of things you need to know about how this process will work. The elections will decide the makeup of two thirds of Qatar's legislative Shura Council. The final third are people appointed by the Emir. There are no political parties in the Shura Council elections, only candidates. And speaking of candidates, there are a number of conditions that apply to them. They have to be over the age of 30, originally Qatari, and cannot be a minister, member of the armed forces, judiciary, or a member of Qatar's municipal council. Members of the ruling Al Thani family are are also not allowed to stand as candidates but are allowed to vote. Candidates must be fluent in written and spoken Arabic and have a clean criminal record with no conviction for any offence related to immoral behaviour or dishonesty unless they've been rehabilitated in the eyes of the law. Apart from that, candidates cannot receive financial support from abroad and if they do, they risk five years in prison. Campaign spending limits are capped at 2 million riyals, which is about $533,000. But most importantly, when campaigning, candidates must avoid tribal or sectarian rhetoric and are obliged to respect public morals, traditions and the religious and social values of Qatari society. They're also prohibited from offending others or stirring up communal strife. A breath of fresh air in light of the rise of populism and negative campaigning which have taken centre stage in elections elsewhere around the world. Candidates also need to stand in constituencies linked to where their family or tribe was based in the 1930s. And as for the media, both public and private media are to be impartial in their coverage and treatment of all candidates. To be eligible to vote in the Shura elections, a person's grandfather has to have been Qatari and born in the country, or the voter's family must have been present in Qatar before 1930. Also, only Qataris above 18 can cast a vote. And like the candidates, they must have not been convicted of a crime involving morality or dishonesty. The law outlining who can vote in Qatar actually dates back to a constitution approved in a 2003 referendum and could be reversed by a new Shura council. Qatar is a country with about 2.7 million people only 10% of whom are actually Qataris. The rest are predominantly foreign workers. A committee overseen by a judge chosen by the Supreme Judicial Council will be supervising the voting and counting process and will also be responsible for announcing the results. There will be severe penalties for electoral offences such as foreign meddling or buying votes. Qatar's legislative elections will take place on October 2nd between 8am and 6pm when voters will finally decide who makes up two thirds of their Shura Council. A significant step for a country willing to push back boundaries. Head over to www.dohanews.co for all the latest on the Shura Council elections.